Hey everybody, welcome back to another Dead Stick Adventures video. Last time we looked at a stretched Cessna, this time we're going to have a look at a stretched Piper. So in 1963, Piper had some competitors in the market. They had Beechcraft with their Bonanza and they had Cessna with their 206s and 207s. And Piper needed a six seater really to compete with their two main competitors. So what they did is they took a standard Cherokee and they put a few extra pieces in the fuselage and bang, the stretched six seater Cherokee six was born. Actually, this one's a seven seater. So taking the P828 fuselage and stretching it means you've got this nice big baggage door here. You can see this one hinges up and this one hinges out, which means it's really easy to get long loads in here. Super easy to load and unload. It's been a favorite for skydivers because of course you can tumble out pretty easy. And it's also been a favorite of funeral directors in the 60s and 70s when these were brand new. You could of course slide a casket in here. And in fact, that's one of the reasons that in the US we say souls on board, whereas here in Australia, we never use them for funeral directors carting around caskets, so we say persons on board. So it was the number one choice for funeral directors until insurance requirements stopped them hauling dead bodies in light general aviation aircraft. Shame. Pretty standard Cherokee stuff here. Because it's an earlier model, it's got the slab wing, which I love, love, love flying. Later models post 1980s got the semi-tapered wing, but they changed to Saratoga. There was a fixed gear Saratoga, and then they did a retractable Saratoga, which we've also done a video on. Thankfully, no complicated fuel system here, no tip tanks, just two massive bladders in here, which contain 178 litres of fuel, giving you, in both sides, 356 litres of fuel in total, which is good for about five hours endurance. So this aircraft, like most big singles, has a zero fuel weight, which is a weight above which all of the additional weight must be fuel. So it's a really unusual choice. So when you're looking at your weight and balance considerations for a long flight with a heavy load, you have to keep that in mind. So initially the Cherokee 6 came with the 0540 rated to 260 horsepower. Now they're a bit anemic. They didn't like to climb very well. Uh, I've flown one, they're not the fastest plane on the planet but they work. But in 1966, Piper put the 0540 injected version rated to 300 horsepower. And that's what this one has. With the constant speed unit up front, it climbs like a rocket ship. So with the 0540, this big two blade prop and the constant speed unit, she's good for about 135 to 140 knots Taz. So it gets you anywhere you want to go reasonably quickly. Unfortunately, given all the airplanes of this era, it's a little bit thirsty, 65 liters per hour or 16 gallons per hour. So it drinks plenty of fuel, but it gets you there reasonably quick. So since we've got that extra space out the back, of course we have to counterbalance that by putting the engine a bit further forward. That gives us access to this nose locker. Now, weight and balance is a consideration here. If you've just got people in the front seats, you probably don't want to load up this nose locker too much because you'll have too forward a center of gravity. Better to put the heavy tools and the cartons of beer in the back. So simplicity is the watchword with the Cherokee 6. You've got some basic fixed gear and reasonable fuel consumption. And of course you can take six people People at 140 knots so it's not a bad little plane and if you've flown any other sort of Cherokee a 140 or a Warrior anything like that you're gonna feel right at home in the Cherokee 6 so on a normal Cherokee you would have this rear quarter window and you'd have the baggage door right there what Piper did is they just took this extra section added it to the Cherokee fuselage and of course it's a little bit wider so it is actually a different fuse but here's where the extra space is Back here, pretty standard Piper fare, except the elevator is just a little bit bigger than a standard Cherokee, but it's all very similar. You've got that Piper all flying tail, which is on all of their aircraft. Everything's pretty similar to a Cherokee back here. So it's really interesting flying this aircraft. I've done about 10 hours in it now, and it's got a really interesting characteristic with this wing. The transition from a high speed ground roll to actual flight, there's quite a big hesitation in it. And I noticed that the first couple of times I flew it, then what I started doing was using one stage on takeoff, and that's really nice because that gives you a real positive rotation and an instant lift. It gets rid of that hesitation immediately. The other thing to watch out for is if you pull power on the base leg and then tip it into a turn, it slows down really quickly and gets slow. And that's because of this slab wing. It doesn't have the finesse or the lift that the semi-tapered wing has. So you've got to be really careful of that. 
So when you're on a long trip in this aircraft, of course you can run it flat out and get 135 knots at 25 inches and 2500 RPM, burning about 65 litres an hour or 16 gallons an hour. But if you want to, you can get a better economy by bringing it back to 21 inches and 2100 RPM, and that's going to burn about 47 litres an hour at a cost of about 10 knots. All right, let's have a look at this back seat. Wow. Okay, yeah, I've never sat in the back seat of this and I am pleasantly surprised. I've got heaps of legroom. Like there's 10 inches between my knee and that seat. That's pretty impressive. Heaps of heaps of legroom. I can reach back, I can get whatever I need out of here. Oh, what's this? Oh, check this guy out. This is the extra seat. Just in case you want to put an extra kid in this middle row, you can put that seat right there and you've got seven seats. That's pretty nifty. Right. So it's a pretty comfy third row. I am impressed. You've even got your own air vents up here. You've got your own interior lighting, which even works. How cool is that? I don't know if I'm looking forward to this, but let's have a look. Right. Okay, so here we are in the second row. It's a little more compact, but it's wider. So this cabin's like four feet wide. You've got heaps and heaps of space. But um, actually, it's not too bad. It's a little tighter than, than certainly than the, than the rear row, but I don't know. I'd be pretty happy sitting here for a long flight. I reckon I've got plenty of, I've got reasonable leg room. And of course, the pilots and co-pilot seats are gonna be all the way forward. So I reckon you'd have plenty of space. And then of course, if you had your bags back here, you can just grab some stuff. You can put something here, even that kid put a kid right next to you if you need to and uh, you've got your intercom jacks just here so it's really easy to reach your intercom jacks plug your headsets in have a chat to the pilot yeah no, I'm pretty impressed I've got really good headroom as well and my own vents I reckon I'd be pretty pleased to sit back here for a while maybe even on a long leg Another interesting design choice here by Piper is the main spa comes straight through the cabin. So that's one of the reasons you've got this big box in the middle here. And you, that's one, another reason that you can actually put that seat there is this big box structure that contains the main spa for the wings. So one thing you'll notice if you jump out of a Cherokee and into the Cherokee 6 is how much wider the cabin is. In fact, it's four feet wide, four feet high, and it's 13 feet long. So it's much wider, it's much roomier, but of course, everything's in the same place. Being a Piper, being a Cherokee, it's all in the place that you're used to. So up here, you've got this nice padded glare shield. And one of the things that makes it a bit of a challenge with that long nose out the front is a flapless approach. With that long nose, you can't really see the runway when you're on a flapless approach, but uh, it makes for an interesting challenge. So if you've flown a Cherokee, all of this feels pretty familiar, but there's two things to watch out for with the Cherokee 6. One is that the control forces are really heavy compared to your standard Warrior or your standard Cherokee. So that's something to be aware of. The other thing is when you pull power during an approach, it wants to sink really quickly. So I tend to keep it up around about 15 inches all the way around base to final, and then just bleeding that power off late final to come in and get below 70 knots. The other thing to watch out for, you've got to be really strong on these nose steering. The steering is super, super heavy. I have to be at full extension and I can feel my legs shaking to try and get it turned on some of the taxiways up here. But other than that, super, super nice aeroplane, fun to fly. Let's talk about this panel. So pretty standard six pack stuff. You've seen this in every Cherokee. Really nice G5 here, which is fantastic for situational awareness and uh, gives you that backup so you're not relying on that vacuum pump. Then of course, oil temp, oil pressure, alternator, fuel, all in the same place as a standard Cherokee. Down here, manifold pressure, fuel pressure, and RPM, everything you'd expect. Got a really small little fuel flow monitor here, which is really nice, of course, to know exactly how many liters you've got remaining in this aircraft. Autopilot on the left-hand side here, unfortunately doesn't work. We don't know what's wrong with it yet, but we're sure gonna figure it out. Or well, we might not. Interesting design feature as well, all the switches on the left hand side here. So you got your alternator, your fuel pump, your beacon, your landing light and your pitot heat all on the left hand side here. Coming down the centre here, absolutely love this. Uh, and then of course this really nice, uh, really nice radio panel here. Pretty good GPS, 430, moving map. Uh, so big fan of that and of course it's got the comm in it which is great. Uh, secondary comm, not the best secondary comm I've ever seen, but it's serviceable, it works. 
And then we've got this nice big screen here, the Apollo MX-20, and that just mirrors everything that's happening over here on the GPS, which is, again, good for that moving map display. And then ADS-B transponder, which is pretty cool. Moving further over here, of course, we've got an HF, which is a bit, of, a bit anachronistic these days, so it's probably gonna go away. Uh, and then we've got a UHF as well. And of course, standard Piper throttle quadrant, you've got this blue lever there, being, of course, your engine RPM or your uh, propeller control. And then coming down here, handbrake, of course, in the normal spot, you've got your rudder trim there, so you can trim out control forces during flight. It means you can actually fly hands and feet off, which is nice. One thing I don't like about the design down here is this fuel selector. So if I'm on the right tank, I reach down and go left tank, I can very easily go one too far, just accidentally go across to there, and the fuel's off. I've got no fuel flowing to my engine, which is not gonna be very good for that spinny thing up the front. But uh, other than that, I think it's pretty easy. I mean, just left tank, right tank makes it really, really easy to figure out your fuel trim. I tend to run about half an hour to 45 minutes out of each tank, sometimes on a long leg, maybe an hour out of each tank, and flip-flop every hour. Then, of course, standard Piper. Flaps here, one, two, three stages. And then, and then of course, we've got the trim, just your standard Piper trim wheel. But this aircraft has electric pitch trim, which is really nice. So there you go, that's our Cherokee 6 India Sierra Bravo. We picked it up from Caloundra, got it ferried down here to Parafield, and since then, I think I've fallen in love with it. Tell me what you think. Do you love the Cherokee 6? Do you hate the Cherokee 6? What stories have you got? Leave a comment down below. We've done a bunch of different videos. We did the Cessna 207 recently, which is definitely worth checking out. And then we've got a bunch of different walk around videos of different aircraft, just in case this is the first one that you've seen from Dead Stick Adventures. And then we also do the occasional adventure. We've done some flyaways and we've done some adventures up to Arkarula in South Australia, which was a ton of fun, except for those massive spiders. You remember that, Josh? Oh, they were good. <laughs> Thank you.